Do you know that scientists have discovered something terrifying in the ocean? Let's see what it is in this video. When you look at the world map, you can see the seven continents, including Asia, Australia, North and South America and Africa. However, until about 200 million years ago, the Earth didn't have seven continents. Instead, it had Pangaea, a substantial supercontinent that was surrounded by a single ocean. During the Triassic period, Pangaea was the only fragment and it was split into two new continents, Laurasia and Gondwanaland. The more enormous continent Gondwanaland divided into the present continents of South America, Africa and Europe during the Triassic period, while the smaller continent Laurasia moved north and finally broke off into what is now known as Europe, Asia and North America, Antarctica and Australia. Join us as we investigate scientists' insane discovery of a secret continent under the ocean. The Indian subcontinent and the Arabian Peninsula combined make up about two-thirds of the current continent. Still, many people are now into another piece, a region that took researchers to eight continents that had been waiting for them under the water all along. How did this continent come to be? What had previously lived there? How long had it been submerged? Let's see. Europeans had an unwavering belief that there must be a sizable landmass there, which they preemptively named Terra Australis to balance out their continent in the north at the time. Their fixation had existed since the time of the ancient Romans, but Abel Tasman was on a mission in 1642. The seasoned Dutch sailor was certain that the southern hemisphere had a massive continent and he was determined to find it. Tasman consequently set out on August 14th in two little ships from the Indonesian port of Jakarta and traveled west, south and then east before reaching the South Island of New Zealand. When he first encountered the Maori people who are thought to have arrived in the region hundreds of years earlier, it was not a good beginning for him. On day two, some of them got into a canoe and rammed a small boat carrying messages between the Dutch ships. Four Europeans were killed in the incident. Tasman gave the tragic location the ironic name Murderous Bay and sailed home a few weeks later without having even set foot on this new continent. Although he believed he had discovered the big southern continent, it was not the commercial paradise he had imagined. The fate of the European's targets is unknown after they fired the cannon at 11 more canoes. That was the end of his expedition and he never came back. Tasman had no idea that he'd been right all along, that there was a continent missing when a team of geologists revealed the discovery of Zelandia, which made headlines. Australia had already been discovered by this point, but the Europeans thought it was not the legendary continent they were looking for. When they changed their minds, it was later given the name Terra Australis. With a total area of 1.89 million square miles, 4.9 million square kilometers, it is about six times the size of Madagascar. Although encyclopedias, maps and search engines had long maintained that there are only seven continents, the team asserted audaciously that there are more than seven. But as we can now see, there are eight of them, with the most recent one breaking all previous records for being the smallest, thinnest and youngest continent in the world. Only a small number of islands, including New Zealand, protrude from the ocean's depth, making up 94 of them. However, that was only the beginning. The continent is still a mystery. Five years later, his closely guarded secrets were still submerged in water that was 6,550 meters, 2,600 feet deep. When the continent was finally made known to the world, one of the largest marine domains in the world was unleashed. In addition to New Zealand, the continent also contains the islands of New Caledonia, a French colony famous for its stunning legumes, Lord Howe Island and Ball's Pyramid, two minor Australian territories. According to one 18th century explorer, the latter didn't seem to be much bigger than a canoe. Formerly a part of the supercontinent known as Gondwana, which originally covered the whole southern hemisphere and was formed about 550 million years ago, New Zealand was situated in an eastern corner and bordered several other nations, including all of eastern Australia and half of West Antarctica. The tension stretched the Alandia to the point where its crust is now only 20 kilometers, 12.4 miles deep. The wafer-thin continent eventually submerged under the water, though not quite to the depth at which the continental crust is typically about 40 kilometers thick. Then around 105 million years ago, Zelandia began to be dragged apart by a process that experts still do not fully comprehend. Despite being thin and small, geologists nevertheless consider Alandia to be a continent. Granite, schist and limestone are frequent examples of igneous metamorphic and sedimentary rocks found in the continental crust. 
whereas basalt is usually found on the ocean floor. However, there are still a lot of unknowns. Submerged due to the type of rocks that may be found there, it is still unclear how Zealandia, which is so thin, managed to keep its integrity and avoid breaking up into numerous small microcontinents, making it the eighth continent, which is particularly fascinating to geologists and somewhat baffling due to its odd beginnings. Another unanswered topic concerns the precise moment when New Zealand sank and if dry land ever existed. Gondwana itself was home to a diverse range of flora and fauna, including the first four-legged land animals and later an abundance of the largest creatures to ever live, the titanosaurs. It also had a mild climate and the 39 million square mile, 101 million square kilometer range, so could their prehistoric counterparts have survived there? However, because the ridges that are currently above sea level were created when the Australian and Pacific tectonic plates collided, in the 1990s, fossilized land animals were discovered, including a rib bone of a giant, long-necked, long-tailed dinosaur, a sauropod, a beaky, herbivorous dinosaur, ipsilophodont, an armed dinosaur, an ankylosaur. Then, in 2006, a large predator, possibly an allosaur, was discovered about 500 miles, 800 kilometers, east of the South Island. It is important to note that all of these fossils were formed after Zealandia separated from Gondwana. Rupert Sutherland, a professor of geophysics and tectonics at the Victoria University of Wellington, says there is a lengthy argument about whether it is feasible to have land animals without continuous land and whether they would have perished without it. Oddly, the closest relative of the kiwi, a clumsy flightless bird with whiskers and feathers that resemble hair, isn't thought to be the mower, which belonged to the same group as red tides and lived on the same island until it went extinct 500 years ago, adding complication to the plot. Scientists now suspect that both species are descended from a single ancestor that lived on Gondwana and that their nearest relative is the bigger elephant bird, which stalked Madagascar's woods up until 800 years ago. It took 130 million years for it to entirely collapse as a result of the finding, but once it did, it left behind pieces that eventually became South America, Africa, Madagascar, Antarctica, Australia, the Arabian Peninsula, the Indian subcontinent and Zealandia. Since the entire continent, including all of New Zealand, is thought to have submerged about 25 million years ago, it follows that at least some of the currently submerged New Zealand may have remained above sea level throughout. However, since it is impossible to directly collect fossils from the seafloor of New Zealand, researchers have begun drilling into its depths. The most beneficial and unusual fossils are those found in quite shallow oceans. The shape of Zealandia is another unresolved mystery. Zillions and billions of microscopic minuscule fossils are distinctly different and leave a trace. On a geological map of New Zealand, two characteristics stand out in particular. One of them is the Alpine Fault, a plate boundary that runs along the South Island and is so significant that it can be seen from space. The second is that the geology of both New Zealand and the entire continent is strangely bent. The tectonic plates of the Pacific and Australia collide, separating them both along a horizontal axis. Previously continuous ribbons of granite no longer line up and are now almost at right angles. There are many ways to interpret this, but there is still a lot that is unknown. The continent is unlikely to reveal all of its secrets anytime soon. Subscribe to the channel and leave a comment if you like this video, and tell us about your opinions about this eighth continent. Thanks for watching.